What are some upgrades that I'm making to my preps because of Hurricane Helene? Today's video, we're going to be discussing. Since Hurricane Helene hit Western North Carolina and Tennessee almost a month and a half ago now, this channel has been focused on Hurricane Helene. And the reason for that is because it should have been us. It could have been us. Had it not turned at the last minute, Hurricane Helene was supposed to knock on our front door. Now, I'll be honest with you. I was prepared for a hurricane. I was prepared for a storm. Like many storms that we get, I was expecting a little bit of rain, a little bit of wind, a couple trees down, a little bit of power outage. What happened in North Carolina was not what I was prepared for. Had it hit us and had it not turned at the last minute, I think that myself and my family probably would have been okay. But what hit North Carolina? There was no way I could possibly prepare for that. So since that storm hit, I have been really focusing in on upgrading my preps and being prepared for a storm like that to hit again. So the first upgrade that I am making because of Hurricane Helene is having cash on me at all times. I'll be honest, when the storm hit, I maybe had a $5 bill on me. That's not going through my coins. That's not going through anything. That's just what I had on me when the storm actually hit. Now I know I have put out many videos where I talked about carrying cash on you, whether that be in your bug out bag, in your car, in your wallet, have cash on you. But like most people, I don't listen to my own advice. Now, because 90% of my state lost power, running up to an ATM to get cash out was a little bit harder than it seemed. I was able to go and get some cash out that night that it hit, but the day after, the day after that, you couldn't get cash to save your life because it was all used up. It was all gone. So having cash on you, not just $5, but at least a hundred bucks. That's my first upgrade. I'm going to put a hundred dollars in my car. I'm going to put a hundred dollars in my wife's car and another hundred dollars at home. We saw a lot of issues in Spartanburg and Greenville County where people were lining up to get fuel. The problem was it was cash only. And let's say you did only have $5 on you. Do you put $5 in your fuel tank or do you go to the grocery store and buy $5 worth of rice and beans for your family? Who determines what's more important? Is keeping your generator on because you're down to your last $5 worth of gas more important than keeping a couple cans of Spam or a couple uh, Chef Boyardee cans on the shelf for the kiddos? So instead of having to determine what that last $5 goes for, I'm going to be keeping a stack of cash. So upgrade number two is both an emergency upgrade and a day-to-day -day upgrade. So I have the EcoFlow Delta Pro battery. It is a massive 3.6 kW battery pack, weighs over 100 pounds, has wheels on it, will not fit on this table. It's pretty big. The reason we bought that was because as a family, we decided it was easier for my wife to go to the bedroom, pull that out, plug it up to whatever is needed to be recharged or plugged in versus coming out here to a building, finding the generator, finding drop cords, making sure you have the right gas, making sure you have the right oil for the generator. So we have the EcoFlow Delta Pro battery. One good thing about a battery of that capacity and that size is that it can be used for a home battery pack. So the second upgrade that we are making is getting a transfer switch for the EcoFlow Delta Pro. So how this transfer switch works is even though it's for a battery, it acts just like any gasoline transfer switch. You put it beside your normal electrical sub, uh, your normal panel. Then you choose six outlets that can be moved over to this transfer switch slash sub panel. When you move those outlets over, it gives you the option off, generator power or grid power. When you have this transfer switch installed, you can then run a 30 amp breaker cord from the EcoFlow Delta Pro to the transfer switch. Then you pick six breakers and flip them on or flip them off. You can choose what you want to do and you can choose if they want to run during some sort of power outage. So because I already have the Delta Pro and because I'm never going to use it enough to make my money back, I thought, hey, this would be a good option for us to go ahead and install, and that way those six uh, breakers are running off the Delta Pro. 
The good thing about the EcoFlow Delta Pro and the large battery packs like the Jackery, the Blue Yeti, is that it not only acts during an emergency, but you have the choice of going over there, flipping all those breakers to generator power and running day to day off of your battery packs. And this is what we are going to try to do. We can't run the entire house off grid, but we can put certain things off grid, such as the freezers, such as my wife's bedroom where she sleeps with the kids, such as the living room where the TV and the lights are on. I can't put big things on it, such as the dryer or the hot water heater, but your little day-to-day -day minute small little items, I can go ahead and pull those away from my power company and say, hey, power company, screw you. I'm making my own power. There are still a lot of questions with this that I have to answer, such as how long is the 30 amp cord running from the Delta Pro to the sub panel? Is my placement of the sub panel transfer switch a good position or do I need to move it around somewhere? And most importantly is how am I going to get solar power back into the Delta Pro? Because currently if I want solar power, I'll move the unit outside, throw some solar panels out. Well, if it's established in the center of my house, and it's automatically running my freezers, my TVs, my lights, I don't want to unplug that thing to take it outside for six to eight hours to then try to get some solar panels. So the reason we want to put this transfer switch in and rely more on battery power versus gas power is because I have a wife and kids. If I was by myself, I would have no problem going up to the store, getting five gallons worth of fuel, coming back down, even if I had to walk, even if it was an all day thing, fine, no problem, no worries, it's just me. But because I have a wife and kids, I don't want to leave them here or make them do that. I don't want my wife to have to load up the kids in the van, run up to the store during a power outage and some sort of civil unrest, possible civil unrest situation just to get a little bit of fuel, just to bring it back home to run a generator. I would rather have a lot of my majority important stuff be ran via that solar system and then the gasoline be used as a backup. The third upgrade that I am making to my preps is communication. This is a Baofeng UV5R. I've had this radio for about four to five years now. I bought it when Hurricane Irma rolled through here in 2017, 2018. Basically after I bought the house, I bought this radio. This is probably the third time that it's been out of this box over here. I bought it, plugged it up and said, yep, one day I will figure out how to use this. That's been almost 10 years ago now. Ham radios were the only item that could get a signal out in Western North Carolina for rescue, for operations, for communications, for rescue, for anything, ham radio. The repeater towers luckily ran on a backup propane system. If it weren't for that backup system, these would have been useless. But luckily, because the repeater towers do have a backup system, these were the only form of communication that you could get out. Interestingly enough, I was actually working on a video that says, hey, don't buy ham radios. You don't need them because you don't need to talk to people outside of your area. Walkie talkies are better because, you know, chances are if a storm hits, you're going to be talking within a mile or two. And that's where walkie talkies come into play. Who cares if you're talking to people in California with this ham radio? It, it's not going to help you. They're not going to benefit you. But surprisingly enough, during the storm, it was the people in California and the people in Colorado and the people in Florida and the people up north who were setting up the rescue efforts, who were writing down, hey, this is where all these people are. We need to send people to go get them, who were setting up the supply drops. Now, right after the storm, I bought the TID radio. These are a little bit bigger than the UV5R Bofangs, but the better thing about these compared to these is that it is a 10 watt radio which means it has a little bit more power the uv5rs are only about 5 watt radios so getting out the signal this one has more power to it another good thing about the tid radios is that they are usb-c rechargeable compared to this which takes shore power right you have to have some sort of power station established or generator power to charge up the bowfangs this is usb-c Another good thing about the TID radio is that it is Bluetooth programmable. 
So I connect it to my phone and I can connect it to the repeaters. I can look what's in my area, look at the repeater towers, connect to those, whatever the case is, I can program it via Bluetooth. Now they do make something that is from TID Radio that is a little connector that connects to the UV5R that then makes it Bluetooth programmable. But I didn't get that instead. I got this, two new radios. I got one here, another one in the box because I want to work on my ham. My communication has been one of my weak points since becoming a prepper. So communication is going to be my big point of this 2025 year of working on it, establishing it, getting my ham radio license, because honestly, a storm like that, you can't just pick this radio up and, and say, oh, I'll figure it out, right? It's been in the box for five years, but I'll figure it out when I need to. You need to know how to operate it. And even if you stick with the bow fangs, that's fine but you have to figure it out. Just having something in a box somewhere that you've never looked at, it's not good, right? Just because you have it doesn't mean you know how to operate it. Just because you have it doesn't mean that it's going to work in an emergency when you need it to. So again, TID radio is a little bit easier to operate, Bluetooth connectable, USB-C rechargeable. So I picked up a couple of these. If they work well, you know, we might do full reviews on them, comparing them to the UV-5Rs but we will see but communication is going to be a big one for this year so upgrades number four and five are the same thing yet different sizes so that is propane i know right now currently i have 250 gallons of propane right beside this building i know i also have another 100 gallon tank also beside this building i know that i have 300 plus gallons of propane sitting on my property which is fantastic but that propane is inside of my house there's only two things that I can use that propane with if there's no power, and that is my stove and my backup heater. I know that during the storm, a lot of communities came together. They came together to help one another out. They came together to share a meal. They came together to share their homes. Do I really want my neighbors inside of my home to feed them a meal? I'm all for helping my neighbors. I'm all for sharing my food and my you know, community building it up, but do I want these people inside of my home? So I got to thinking like, I don't mind cooking for my neighbors. I don't mind divvying up breakfast for my neighbors or dinner for my neighbors. I told my wife, I said, hey, look, if this storm would have hit or the next storm hits, you're gonna be on pancake duty. And every morning we're gonna do pancakes and breakfast and sausage and eggs. And we're gonna have the neighbors come over and, and have a meal with us. But do I want to have that meal inside of my home, where my kids are, where my preps are, where my weapons are, where my food is? Or would I rather have that meal under my carport where my grill is? For me, not knowing these people on a that close level, I don't care. I'm giving you something free, some sort of meal, pancake, breakfast type thing. I'd rather you eat it outside or grab it and go. We talk for five minutes and you move on. I don't mind helping out my neighbors. I don't mind helping out and building up my community. But when you don't know somebody well enough, you have to ask yourself, do you want that person inside of your home? So what my plans are is to have three of the 20 pound propane cylinders for that outdoor grill. And that way, you know, hey, in case I need to cook for somebody or whatever the case is, I need to boil up some water for the neighbors, that can kind of be their go-to, right? And once the tank runs out, I control the tank. Once it runs out, hey, sorry, got to move on. Or hey, you know, the store in town is offering propane. Y'all have to pay for it. I can have the stuff, but then let them use it and keep them away from the inside of my home. So speaking of propane, let's talk about these one pound propane cylinders. I don't have a lot of these. I got maybe maybe five, six of them. This one was actually empty, so I need to throw it away. My thought is that these are easier to pass out than an entire 20 pound tank. These are not refillable. Please do not refill them. So I was thinking about buying the refillable kind and then passing those out to help out the neighbors. In case, Lord forbid, something happens, they lose power, Maybe they have a Mr. Buddy heater. Hey, they can use a one pound cylinder with that. Or then maybe they have one of those single burner stoves that goes on top. They can use a one pound cylinder for that, right? I don't want to stock up on these because they're not refillable. 
However, the refillable fuel keg, and there's another brand, those are refuelable. So what I can do is I can take my 20 pound cylinder, I can attach it and then refill it up and then pass it out again, right? The problem with that is that they are damn expensive. I think each one pound refillable propane can is like 20 bucks. Dude, I can get like 10 of these for 20 bucks. So I don't know which direction I wanna go. The refillable ones are gonna be great for your longer term. If you can refill your 20 pound cylinder or swap it out at a gas station during the storm, you can bring it back home, refill them up, then go again. And so now not only have 20 pounds, but have 40 pounds, right? Versus these that are pre-filled, but are only usable once. Now I know somebody's gonna say, well, you can refill these. Please don't, for the love of everything, please don't refill these. They are not safe if you refill them. Again, I don't know if I wanna go the fuel keg route, which is the refillable one pound cylinders, or if I just wanna buy another 20 pound cylinder. Because again, each one of the refillable cans is about $18 a piece, plus the tool is about 40 bucks. So you are investing a lot of money into it, but I can go down to Lowe's and get a 20 pound cylinder for like 40 bucks. So I don't know which way I wanna go. These are easier to pass out. These are usable to trade off, but do I wanna trade off 20 pounds of propane at a time? I don't know yet. So because this video is getting pretty long, we're gonna do a part two. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. Again, there's a lot of questions to be had. Do I wanna go with the one pound refillable tanks? How am I gonna set up my solar system, right? There's a lot of questions to be had and I get it. Let me know what you guys think about the upgrades and let me know if you've ever had to upgrade any of your systems after a big storm. That's all I got for today's video. Hopefully you guys stay safe and stay tuned for part two. That's all I got, T2 out.